It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Let's go back to your huddle. On Giants.com. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And the Giants mobile app. Go, 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 part go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Yeah. All right, we're back here on the Giants huddle podcast. John Schmilk with you. This week's guest is Giants wide receiver David Sills. Before we get to David, a reminder, you can find the Giants huddle podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms on the Giants mobile app and at Giants.com slash podcast. David, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. No, no problem, man. All right, let's, let's talk about it here. You had two joint practices up there um, in New England. How'd those go for you as you head into this final preseason game? Uh, it felt really good. Um, you know, it, it felt good to be able to go up there and get a, a lot of different situational work. Um, you know, stuff, something that's h- kind of hard to simulate in practices, you know, end the game two minutes and doing stuff like that. Uh, so it, it was really good to be able to, uh, to go up there and do that, um, you know, against such a great organization. Um, but you know, it was really, really good going into this last preseason game, being able to, um, you know, go against them in, in practice for a couple of days and then being able to kind of know what you're going to get out there on the field, you know, similar to, to how the Browns were the week before. I mean, that was about as many competitive team reps as you guys have had in a single practice this summer, right, you'd say? Yeah, I mean, it uh, it was very, very high energy, very competitive. Um, so I think it, it, our, our team got a lot better as a whole, um, you know, being able to get those valuable reps before uh, this last preseason game and before the season. Now, you've gotten a ton of those competitive reps in the competitive practices, also in the preseason games. As a player, how do you compare those? Which ones are more valuable? How are they different? How do they help you in different ways? Yeah, I mean, you got they're all valuable. Any any rep, you know, whether it's, you know, we just finished a walkthrough. All those reps are valuable. Now, the, the walkthrough reps need to be more um, valuable mentally, and the, the physical reps, obviously, um, mentally and physically, but uh, you know they're valuable on, uh, on you know no matter what you're doing. So uh, obviously the game reps, um, you know it, the, everything's live. You know there's not like you know they're not like letting the quarterback throw the ball and stuff like that. So you got to kind of you know have that, that there's a rush back there too. So um, you know you try to emulate that in practice and do all those things. So um, you know it, it's not like the, the 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 coaches here do such a good job of making. Um, the practices feel like a game. So when you get out there in a game, it, you, you, you've been used to the situation. Now, obviously, the human factor of uh, it being a game and adrenaline sure. and all that stuff plays into it. But, you know, you, you, you try to keep the reps the same. I mean, that's why they try to emulate that in practice. Now, one thing you can't simulate in practice is getting hit and getting tackled to the ground. So in practice, there's a high ball over the middle. You're going to go up and get it. Not a problem, right? You're in a game. How does that change for you, knowing that there could be that free safety coming down and ready to put his shoulder and head sometimes right into your back or shoulder? Yeah, or whatever? I mean, as, as a receiver, you, you, you kind of have that trust in the quarterback that he's, um, you know, if he does put, put it into a window that's a little tighter, whether, sure. you know, he'll put the ball into where uh, into a position to where you can kind of protect yourself. Um, you know, but but our quarterbacks do a great job of that, and um, you know, really going through their reads. So that's that's really something that us as receivers can't really worry about. Um, you know, if the ball's in the air, it's our job to go get it, no matter what the circumstances are. Joe Judge talked about how it helps you guys to go up against different players in different schemes with the practices in Cleveland and New England, because you can learn some of the tendencies of your opponents. I mean, you've gone against you know Darius Williams and these guys dozens of times. Yeah. So they know what they kind of know your deal. You know their deal a little bit. So. How did it help you to see different faces, different schemes, different techniques from different players over these past two weeks against Cleveland and New England? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. Um, you know, like you said, once you get continue to to go uh, against a player, um, you know, a certain amount of times, which we've gone against our all of our all of our corners and 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 nickel corners, um, you know, multiple amount of times before we went and got those joint practices. You know, we kind of know where their strengths, what you know, what what they do, what they like to do, so we can you know already have in our mind what we want to do against them so going up um you know in cleveland and then new england figuring out yeah. okay this guy's a you know he's a he's he's a he's a he wants to kind of play with you at the line this guy wants to soft jam and let you kind of dance around so um you know being able to uh, go in there and practice with them the week before and kind of know going into the game okay this is how this guy plays uh, it's very valuable um, you know it's something similar you can kind of do in, in film study as well as you prepare for a game but you know with preseason it's tough to tell who's going to be out <laughs> there course. you know what's going on so um, it's definitely very valuable uh, these last two days is something that 
uh, we'll be able to go look at practice and see how they're going to play us so we can, um, you know, go into the game kind of knowing what to expect. Is that part of the reason you think, too, why, or at least from my vision, and please disagree with me if you want, that the offense probably clicked a little bit better in the second day of both joint practices against Cleveland and New England because you kind of got a feel for what's going on, what they're trying to do for you, the players. Did you see progress from practice in day one to practice in day two in both spots? Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I think uh, we definitely did better in, in the second practice, but um, you know, I'm not. Sh I'm not so sure if that's just you know getting to figure out who they are. I think um, you know that's probably more on us as an offense and um, you know being able to just go out there and and play our game no matter who's out there because at the end of the day you know if we can execute the way that we want to I think um, you know that will be pretty successful. Hey Giant fans don't miss out on the return of New York Giants football the 2021 season is now underway but there is still time to secure your season tickets and root on your Giants here at MetLife Stadium. Speak with the Giant ticket representative now and become a season ticket member by calling 888 NYG 1925. Obviously, nobody wants to see guys in your position group or any group get hurt and have to miss practice, but it has given you an opportunity to get a lot of reps with the ones over the course of the last month or so. Mm -hmm. How valuable has it been for you? And I know you did a lot in the offseason with Daniel. We could talk about that, too, to get those reps with the one to show the coaches what you can do, not only with Daniel, but against the Bradberries, the Adoree Jacksons and guys like that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Any Anytime you get... Um, you know, thrown in there, you, you, you got to be ready. Um, you know, so ma no matter what the circumstances are, um, you know, obviously injuries are a part of the game, um, but, you know, they, they, they always talk about controlling what you control. Um, you know, Coach uh, T Mac and Coach Quinney in their special teams meetings talking about staying ready. Um, you know, you kind of just got to have that uh, mindset throughout throughout you know the whole the whole practice you know whatever you get thrown in there you got to be ready you got to you got to uh you know not miss beat so if you get thrown in there it can't be a drop off so um you know I think that's um something that being able to spend some time with DJ in the off season you know he has some trust in me going in there but you know all the reps are valuable no matter when you get thrown in there so I try to get as many reps as I can no matter who's on the field what's going on um you know so that's kind of been my mindset towards it. Ty Tolbert calls you a rep stealer. <laughs> What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, are you proud of that? I, you should be. I it's think, right? not something I deliberately go and do. I just, <laughs> you know, if 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 he needs somebody, I kind of usually the first one right next to him to like, That's you know, hey, man. I got you, I got you, <laughs> um, you know. So that's. Uh, that's just kind of how I've always always been, and um, you know I think it, the more opportunities you can get, the 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 better it is for you. Um, you know because I feel pretty confident in myself uh, to be able to to go in there and execute. Um, you know, so I, I'm always looking to try to get as many reps as I can. So, what are your main goals for the final preseason game against New England? I really just want to go back and look at the practice film, and then uh, be able to attack the areas I think I didn't do as well in maybe in practice um, you know and go out there and play the game that I've been playing um, you know hopefully uh, be able to make some plays on special teams um, you know and, and just put my uh, best foot forward going into this last preseason game. What are some of those areas that you're kind of locked in on that you're trying to kind of make continued progress in? Uh, you know just continuing to uh, you know, beat their beat their corners and press because obviously that's like the you know the biggest deal for receivers is you want to win against press. Um, you know, and I think they're gonna they're gonna play a good amount of man uh, against us. So being able to win, whether it's a vertical shot or a shorter route, um, you know, being able to attack their technique and and uh, you know just uh, give give the quarterback a friendly throw. You know, we talk about competitions for roster spots, places on the depth chart. Do you even think about that? Is that in your mind? Or are you just saying, look, if I get better and I do what I got to do, that's going to take care of itself. What's your mindset just to the whole approach to, to trying to get on that 53? I mean, Coach Judge and Coach Garrett have a, a pretty clear message about that, just controlling what you can control. Of course. Um, you know, and I think you can't really think into the numbers and, and, and the roster spots of all that because, you know, that'll just add more stress and anxiety about the situation. So, um, you know, really just going in there every day, taking it one day at a time with the mindset, controlling what you can control and putting your best foot forward. Um, you know, I think everything will take care of itself if you just do that. So, you know, I, 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 I don't really try to look in, in too much. I mean, naturally, it'll probably happen, but, sure. um, you know, I, I try to go in there with the mindset 
um, controlling what I can control and, and letting the chips fall, you know, where they fall. Taking all the action of New York Giants football from your very own private suite. Giants suites are a great way to entertain your family and friends while rooting on your Giants here at MetLife Stadium. Speak with the Giants suite representative now by calling 888-NYG-1925. It's a constant mental battle, right? So what was the mental battle like last year when you had just as good of a camp last summer? Look like you had a chance to make the team, and then you have the foot injury. How hard was it for you to kind of mentally stick? Did you have a couple days where you were just, you know, like putting your head against the wall and just like, I can't believe this is happening? What was that whole process like, and, and just making your way back where you eventually did help the team later in the year when you got healthy? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it definitely, um, it, it definitely sucked when it happened. Something I didn't really see coming. Um, but you know, I, I've I've always been a pretty positive guy. I've I've tried not to get you know, get too high or get too low. Um, you know, so when it happened and I got the surgery, the, you know, my, my biggest goal and the, the training staff did a great job of uh, rehabbing me and, and, and pushing me and, you know, keeping a positive mindset the whole time. Um, you know, they did a great job to get me back to, to where I needed to be. Um, you know, and I, I, it sucked at the time. And, you know, you can't really think about what would have happened if it didn't happen because, you know, it happened. So it's it's something that it happens. You know, you, you get surgery, you got to rehab from it and, you know, put yourself in the best situation this year. What did you do to try to continue to get better while you're rehabbing? And then once you were healthy, you have to start actually doing things physically again. Just what was your mindset in terms of trying to continue to get better? What were some of your big goals as you recovered from the uh, really, really on the mental side of it, just continuing to learn the game, um, continuing to learn the offense uh, week to week, going through the defenses we were playing, you know, kind of putting together uh, scouting reports for, for some of the receivers about how these corners play and, um, you know, stuff like that, um, you know, just so I can – keep my mind into it obviously um you know i wasn't out there at practice getting the looks and stuff like that so um watching film and watching tape week to week on uh how the defenses were playing um you know and what i would do myself if i was out there playing um kind of kept me you know locked in and 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 almost made it feel like I was going to play a game at the end of the week, obviously. You know, I wasn't, but, um, you know, that's really kind of my approach for it. What do you think you've made the most progress as a player from when you stepped into this building as a rookie back in 2019 to where you are today? Where do you think you've made the most progress and really focused on to get better? Uh, I think my route running, I think my route running has gotten a lot better. Like in college, you know, we were air raid spread offense, didn't really have... You ran like uh, three, four routes, right? Yeah, That's I mean, much we, it. we didn't really run a, a huge variation of routes, um, you know, so being able to, as a bigger guy to get in and out of breaks, um, you know, I think that's something that I've really improved in since I got into the into the league. Well, it's funny, I actually asked Tyke Tobit about that because he was talking about the, your ability to separate, right, as a bigger guy. It's a little bit tougher sometimes coming mm -hmm. in and out of those breaks, and I asked him, well, is it him big boying people using his strength and his length he goes no you know david he's crafty man he's got great feet and that's how he gets open does that make you smile when you hear your wide receiver yeah it does say that? feel that because i i do feel like you know three years ago when i was coming out that I, that that wasn't something that was said about me it was kind of like okay he's a bigger guy you know he kind of wins in, in in areas and stuff like that um but you know you never really would have heard when i was coming out of college like yeah he wins with his feet and stuff like so that's something that i've really been able to uh put a lot of time in and, and feel like that's been uh, the area that i've improved the most is that off-season training how do you get better at that as a bigger yeah, guy who, you know you have a higher center of gravity it's just tougher to get in that start and stop yeah definitely it's um you know training um you know watching guys obviously um you know me and, and and Shep are a completely different receiver but the way that he gets in and out of breaks picking up little being being around him the last three years picking up things from him and um you know watching other guys do it um you know just continuing to go through uh different drills and and um and things that that naturally you just get continue to get better at it so did you just have Daniel Jones book your flights when he booked his flights <laughs> in the offseason? How did that work? Do you guys have, like, did you guys book together? No, so. It's just like you just followed him wherever he went. There's yeah, David Sills. I mean, Sills. Uh, you know, we, we, we've built uh, a really good friendship and relationship uh, over these past couple years being together. And, um, you know, he was down in Charlotte um, during COVID a couple years ago. My sister lives in Charlotte, oh, not nice. too far from him. So I would kind of, you know, just go over there and stay with her, be able to see her and my um, brother-in-law and you know work out with him so it's kind of like uh, something this offseason where it was like you know are you gonna be down there a decent amount you like so that that was something that 
uh, you know, we talked about and being able to, um, you know, go down there and train together. So he always had somebody to throw to and, um, you know, we could continue to work on timing and everything together. Hey, Giant fans, on September 26th, watch the Giants retire Eli Manning's jersey in style. We are offering an exclusive suite package, which includes Eli bobbleheads, jerseys, T-shirts, and more. Speak with the Giants suite representative now by calling 888-NYG-1925. Select option four. Finally, special teams. I know that first preseason game, you did so many wide receiver stuff, you didn't do a whole lot on specials. Where do you see yourself fitting in in that role? I know we've seen you be a gunner in practice. I've seen you on kick coverage, too. Where do you see your role developing as a special teams player? Because as you know, back end of the roster that's mm -hmm. one of the big things that, that that's gonna help you earn a spot yeah absolutely um you know it, it's really uh I, I try to trying to be on all four phases of special teams um you know i and i think um you know wherever uh t-mac and coach quinn they wherever they uh want me on special teams is what i'm gonna put all my effort into being able to uh, help help the team out with um, you know whatever that may be um, so hopefully in this last game just having an opportunity to go out there and make a couple plays on special teams what has it been like applying yourself to that is that a mental thing with the special teams like I don't think people really know how special teams works right so why don't you open up the the, uh, the door for us a little bit and explain like What's the key for a guy like you to become a good special team player? I mean, uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, good special team teamers in this in this league is, uh, you know, one, knowing your assignment, mm -hmm. um, and, and two, is just the effort part of it. You got to really put in the effort for it, um, you know, because they're, they're long uh, plays of running – very, very hard. I mean, kickoffs a long play, punts a long play, and protect those hamstrings too, right? <laughs> vice versa. So um, it's really just the attitude, I think, going into it, knowing your assignment, and then the the effort that you put into it. So um, just continuing to have that mindset, no, you know, no matter if you're tired or you know if you're if you're fresh, being able to look like the same player out there the whole time. David, best luck against the Patriots. We're rooting for you. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. That's Giants wide receiver David Sills. We thank him for joining us on the Giants Huddle Podcast. And again, as a reminder, you can find the Giants Huddle Podcast on your favorite podcast platforms at Giants.com slash podcast. And, of course, the Giants mobile app. For David Sills, I'm John Schmelk from the patio here at the Quest Diagnostics Training Center. We'll see you next time.